Welcome to Parenting Successful Teens, the podcast that cuts through the overwhelm and stress of this phase and offers parents simple, practical, cognitive, science-based strategies for keeping their teens on track. Join master coach and real-life mom, Allie Irwin, to talk about real teens, real problems, and the skills it takes to raise successful adults. Resentment is a collection of unaddressed anger. It's the anger you tuck yourself out of or try to suppress because you feel like it's not safe to be mad or someone's going to be mad at you for being mad or this is not a socially acceptable thing to be mad about. Or maybe you think it's not an important enough thing to be mad about, but you are mad about it. So all of those, those little things add up, they become like a pile, and that pile of unaddressed anger is resentment. So today's question is, what do you do when that resentment is about your kids? Because talk about things that aren't socially acceptable. <laughs> Resenting your own kids has got to be pretty high on that list. But yet, it's not that uncommon. Ann Tyler has a book that was our book club book a couple of years ago called A Spool of Blue Thread. And there's this great section in the book where she talks about how she had a really difficult time raising her son. And then he grew up and went on to lead a good life. And she was happy about that, genuinely happy about that. But she didn't know what to do with all this resentment she was carrying for how hard that time was and how unacknowledged her efforts were. It's like he got to grow up and go on to be happy (laughs) and she was still mad about that time. And if she were my client, like if that's you, if you have a lot of resentment, my suggestion would be to feel all of those feelings to find someone to help you process those feelings, to create a safe container for you to feel your feelings in so that you don't get overwhelmed by those feelings. If we have gotten to the point of resentment, oftentimes our feelings of anger can feel overwhelming. Like we don't want to feel them because we don't want to say or do something to make the situation worse. But in truth, the only way through, the only way to let that anger go is to actually feel it in the first place. And then from there to then give yourself the acknowledgement of all that you did to give that to yourself rather than waiting on your child to give it to you. Okay, that would be my advice to her. But we're, what we're going to talk about today is how to not let the resentment build up in the first place. And so the big idea that I want you to think about is if you don't want to resent, if you want to enjoy parenting, then the way to do it is to find a way to enjoy it for its own rewards to let being with your kids and being able to be a part of their lives, to enjoy that as its own reward, as opposed to as a means to an end, okay? Because that means to an end, that's what I call transactional thinking, okay? If I do this, you're going to do that. And that doesn't really work, (laughs) (laughs) be great if it worked, but it doesn't because people don't like to be manipulated and controlled. And then when it doesn't work, it creates resentment, honestly, both for you and your child, right? Because now you're trying to control and manipulate them. That's transactional thinking. So they will start to resent you. So let's not do that. And let me give you an example of transactional thinking. So I have a client, this is shared with permission, I have a client who liked to take her son out for ice cream. And the reason she liked that was because that was always the way that she could get her son to talk to her. And so if something was bothering him, she would take, or if she wanted to know about something, she would take him out for ice cream. And then while they were eating their ice cream, he would tell her all the things. So the day that she took him out for ice cream, 
and he didn't tell her all the things, she was low-key pissed off. She got on the call the next week. (laughs) She's like, well, that didn't work. What am I supposed to do now? And I said, you enjoy getting ice cream with your son. Ice cream is delicious, and someday it will be much harder to spend time with him. So my suggestion to her was to find a way on purpose to be intentional about just enjoying being with him no matter what happens, to enjoy the experience of getting ice cream with no attachment to outcome. So she was not buying that. (laughs) She said she didn't at the time. Eventually she did. She's like, well, so I'm just supposed to put up with whatever behavior he has. And I said, of course not. You still set boundaries for how you let people treat you just like you would in any relationship. The part that I'm suggesting you let go of is the transactional thinking. The thinking of, I bought you ice cream, so now you have to tell me about your day. Okay, so if you think about it in a dating analogy, and this is going to be kind of gross, but It's as gross in parenting. So if you think about it in a dating analogy, it's like expecting, you know, a reward for buying someone dinner. Okay? Transactional thinking is like, but I bought you dinner kind of thinking. And it's just as icky in parenting as it is in romantic relationships. Okay? The point is spending time together. And if you don't enjoy that time, then don't do it again. Do something else where you can just literally enjoy being together with no hidden agenda. And that gets easier and easier with intentional practice. And honestly, the same thing is true even with difficult conversations. If you feel like you need to have a difficult conversation and you don't, then anger and resentment are going to build up. And as hard as these conversations can be, there's a certain kind of joy to being in the kind of relationship with your kids where you can really talk about what's on your mind. Because look, at the end of the day, we can't know how things are going to turn out. We can't know which of our activities are going to have a big impact and what outside forces are going to come into play you know, how things are right now is not how things are always going to be. And so finding a way to enjoy how things are right now prevents resentment. The thing is, when you do that, when you find a way to enjoy the individual activities of parents, like all the individual moments that you have together, when you add all of those up, what you end up with is so much more of what you wanted in the first place. Hey, if you enjoyed today's podcast, but you're not quite sure how to put it into practice in your own family, or maybe you've got some anger and resentment that has built up and you'd like some support in processing that and letting it go, (laughs) so you don't reach old age like the woman in Ann Tyler's book and still feel resentment, I want to offer you an easy way to do that. So I've put a link in the show notes that's a link to my calendar. And from there, you can schedule a free call where we'll hop on the phone and you'll tell me about what's going on and what you wish was going on instead. And then I will help you map out a plan on how to get there. So again, the link is in the show notes. I'm trying to make it easy peasy for you because I want you to enjoy your family. I want you to love parenting as much as you love your kids. Talk to you next week.